It's Tuesday, December 5th, back on the Sleepers Podcast. Carter Elliott is with me. I'm Greg Waddell, and uh, I can't wait to be here. This should be a very fun show. We've got some fun topics. We are recording the morning of the day that we're putting the episode out. We're all over the place on the timing of these episodes these days, but there's something that feels right about recording in the mornings with you, though. Yeah, it's it, it does feel somewhat right. Also, just a get it done podcast. You know, if we got to record late at night, we'll do it. If we got to fire it up at 7 a.m., we'll fire it up at 7.15. If we got to do it a little bit later, we'll do it a little bit later. We're, we're a get it done, never, ever forget blue collar podcasts so never never let that get lost in translation we need like I, we always talk about merch ideas we need shirts that actually have blue collars that just have a sleepers logo on it do you like the color blue yeah oh yeah what kind of is question it, is that blue is one of the best colors if not the best color i'm not a big blue guy blue is the most versatile color by far I think navy blue is a great color. Like, I'm wearing navy blue anything, but, like, I'm not firing up just a plain, like, blue polo, like, Duke Blue Devil or anything like that. Or, like, so you're out on I'm, royal blue. I'm honestly not even the biggest sky blue fan. Like, oh, baby blue. So, see, the, the fact that we're talking about how different blues bring different elements to the game. Like, but that's how versatile blue is. You wouldn't hear us doing that with Kelly Green and Lime Green. Never. Kelly Green slaps. Never. I mean, look, I don't get me wrong. I like a good green, but blue is by far the most versatile color. I mean, we could go on and on about this. Well, let's not act like green's not versatile. Like if you're giving me like hunter green, forest green, I mean. I don't even know what hunter green is. Like a nice hunter green. Like no idea what hunter green is. This is hunter green. That's not even green. So hunter green's a fraud. This is green. That's, That's brown. This is not brown. That is more brown or gray than it is green. Okay. Have Have you considered that you might be colorblind? There's a very decent chance of that. Honestly, one of the trippiest thoughts I've had throughout my entire life is, what if everybody sees colors different? There's no way of knowing it. Think about that. Like, what if what if what I see as maize and blue is actually what you see as green and white? Well, that that's actually what colorblind is. Like, it's not actually seeing black and white. It's that you can't see certain – like, certain colors don't look like that color. I don't know that that's true. Uh, no, I swear to God it's true. Uh, because there was a time, uh, actually back in college, where I got, like, annoyed where people would ask me, like, whether I like what they're wearing or not. And I was going to, like, completely approach it like I was colorblind so I couldn't have an opinion. So you studied how to be colorblind? Yeah, like freshman year for like a semester. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I believe you actually did do that. Um, all right. Well, not how I expected this episode to start, but that's the versatility of the Sleepers podcast. Uh, hey, four topics today. That's exciting. So we might as well get into the show so that we can get to those four topics and get out of here at a decent time. Why don't you start us off with the Carter Elliott YouTube comment of the day? Okay, the YouTube comment I'm going to go today is going to be lumped in, uh, and it's going to be to uh, our North Carolina listeners that have seemed to have found our preview video. First of all, I want to say thank you for commenting and thank you for interacting and watching our preview video. Um, I think something was kind of lost in translation a little bit, and I'd like to explain myself because a lot of people were letting me have it, saying that Baycott and Klingon would be kind of a an equal matchup in my eyes. Um, and then they referenced that Baycott ate Dickinson's lunch the last two matchups, and that's kind of what I was using the transitive property with. All I was saying is that I think Baycott is very one dimensional in his offensive game, and I don't think that it's like a bad thing to say, it's just that he doesn't stretch the floor like other bigs do. And I think that bigs that stretch the floor will give Klingon a lot more trouble than a big who's just back to the basket, and I think Klingon can match up with a big in that case. That's all I was trying to say. Uh, but I appreciate all the UNC listeners, um, even though they said some mean things about me in the comments. It's okay. I, I, I Sometimes I need that. Yeah, keep saying mean things about him and about us, please. We like mean things to start. That's some, some of our best relationships in this space have started with like really mean things being said. And then we just win people over with our charm and charisma, you know? Yeah, 
Put your soul. Yeah. You're you're here. That's the first step. Yeah. Soon, like in a couple weeks, you'll notice that Carter and I are basically the podcasting version of R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott. Like extremely talented, but we leave a lot to be desired in a lot of areas. That's. I mean, that sounds about right. Yeah, but we'll always be there for you every single day, even if the results aren't exactly what you always hoped for. Uh, and by the way, we look great in baby blue because baby blue is a very versatile color. Carolina blue specifically. Uh, I, okay. I really, that really struck a color chord with you. <laughs> I, I'm not going to stand for blue disrespect at 1030 a.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> like, what, right. are we, what are we doing? If we do want to talk colors, can we talk about how red is wildly overrated? Oh, 100%. I'm with you on that. There's too much red going on. Like we don't we don't need 70% of schools to be red. Yeah. I, I'm I'm with you on that. There's nothing worse than a red on red, to be honest. I don't like it. Even though I like when red teams wear white uniforms, like white with red trim is nice to me. I do agree with that. I like honestly, red Carolina blue, a nice little uh sneaky color combo. What like that is ha- what, what team has that? Doesn't it isn't there is Oh, Northwestern's alternate uniforms. I think it's like baby blue and red. Northwestern's alternates, Dayton's alternates are yeah. incredible. Uh, Spencer Rosecrans High School, King's High School in Ohio has it. It's iconic. Uh, anyways, okay, we have to do our giveaway. It's December. This is the second time we are doing the giveaway. This is how it works. If you are a paid member of the Sleepers Discord, you get a free entry into a drawing for two tickets of your choice to a sporting event of your choice. Just don't choose the Super Bowl because that would suck for us. Uh, last month in November, Natalie Rose won. She went to an NBA game or is going to an NBA game. Simple as that. We buy the tickets. We get all the info. There you go. Today, we have 84 paid members of the Sleepers Discord that have been entered. I have them all in a list randomizer tab open on my computer right now. I'm going to click randomize, and then we are going to have the winner of the December ticket giveaway announced. Do you have any thoughts before I officially click go and we get our winner? I'm going to jinx this, but if it could not be a Purdue fan at this time, that'd be really nice. All right. uh, Moment of truth, I think. It's probably a 40% chance it's a Purdue fan based on. I know. I know. I'm going to do my best right now. Go ahead. Hit it. Three, two, one. It's a Purdue fan. It's Derek. Derek McCurr is the winner. The Sleepers December ticket giveaway. Uh, Wow. Wow. Big win for us Lansing born and raised folks. Uh, Lansing legend Derek McCurr himself. I have a feeling this is going to be tickets to a Purdue game. That's okay. But also, Derek, because you're in close proximity, I'll see you at St. G and you're going to have to play for both tickets. I'm going to give you one for sure, but I'm going to hop in the runs. And if you want two tickets, you're going to have to win. You know what we should actually do is pull up on the St. G runs because Basilla, Ethan, and uh, and Derek will both be there if we set that up. That'd be fun. That'd be hella, hella fun. I'd do it at this point. Okay, yeah, let's set it up. Uh, congrats, Derek. Also, if Derek's smart, he chooses tickets to Purdue at Indiana at Assembly Hall and has the time of his life and goes in and wreaks havoc on Hoosier fans. That's what I would do. Yeah, very true. But, but congrats, Derek. Yeah, feel free to not choose that, though. Feel free to choose – like a thirty dollar game <laughs> instead of that. Oh, oh, you, oh you, can, you, you can choose that game, but you'll be watching from behind Isaiah Thomas's jersey. <laughs> uh okay, Derek. We'll uh we'll get your info. We'll make sure you get the tickets lined up, my friend. Congratulations and thank you very much for your support. Thank you to everybody who was just uh in the randomizer ticket giveaway. We will do this once a month at the beginning of every month, going forward every month. Until this Discord finally burns itself down, which could happen any given day because uh, like every night right now at 1 a.m. we have Discord infighting going on. So, (laughs) Oh, yeah, the the volatility of the Discord is uh, always at an all-time high, which is what makes it good but also makes it scary. Yeah, it's special. That's how I like to think of it. Uh, And now before we do the rest of the comments from the Discord, I would like you to just address what happened at your men's league. Last night, there was supposedly an incident in the playoffs. Yeah, um, I probably like six minutes left in the semis. I got called for a technical, a well-deserved technical at this point. It was one of those ones where I think my team needed a spark and I didn't I didn't feel the energy. So I picked up I picked up a classic tech, you know, looking at the ref, 
what you know what where's my call he teased me up i'm walking away um and all of a sudden i hear a whistle again and he i turn around and he hits me with the you're out of here that's two technicals and then i was like what are you talking about um and he's like you got one earlier in the game I'm like no i didn't that wasn't me um i know like i'm most likely to get a technical out here but i didn't get one earlier in the game and then after i said that he goes Oh no, that's a double tech. You're out of here. And then I proceeded to be like, all right, if it's a double tech, then I'm going to get my money's worth of my second tech that I'm getting thrown out. And I let him have it. Uh, I threw my Jersey off and I said some choice words and um, I was ejected from the game. What were those choice words? Can we do a little role play situation. Can I be the official here? Uh, I said, you're, you're sensitive as beep. You need to tighten up. This beep is not that serious. Um, what the beep are you looking at? I mean, there's a there's a lot in there. I took everyone out of the book. Nothing super personal, like you didn't go the personal route. No, like families preyed on or anything like that. No, I did say he's a sorry beep excuse for a ref. Okay. All right. Uh, this this was a men's league playoff game. Yeah, semis. Actually, great run by me. Um, as you know, I was all over the place like the last couple months, so I missed a lot of Monday games. We were the A seed. Um, upset the number one seed in the first game. Hold on, out of how many teams? Eight seed out of how many teams? Uh, sixteen. Okay. <laughs> you thought we were the worst team in the league? I thought you were gonna hit me with we were eight out of eight. That's no, no. There's like sixteen teams in the league. Okay, all right, got it. Yeah, A seed, uh, upset the number one overall seed, undefeated on the season, first game. Um, went dumb, beat the next, beat like the third seed or something like that. I don't know who we beat the next team, but uh, ended up losing to another pretty good team in the last game. Um, really struggled cramping up because they do back-to-back games for the quarters in the semis, and I'm just not made to do back-to-back right now, coming, coming, off, the, coming off the illness. Was that the game you got the tech in the the one you lost? Yeah. Okay. I uh, I just spat all over the place. I just laughed that you referred to cramps being what was the downfall of your men's league team this session. Uh, yeah. I mean, no. I feel like that's no better uh, summary of who Carter Elliott is as a basketball player these days. Like you had what, like twenty seven seven and six in the upset win in the first round to oh. carry the team, and then uh, also in a flu game. By the way, mind you, you came in like very sick very dehydrated then you come back uh and get a double tech and get thrown out and kill your team season yep so oh wait hold on gee really really quickly here they uploaded film i want to see if you can get audio here can you hear this i can't hear anything Hold yeah, on. we we can't hear anything. Oh, here we go. Sensitive as fuck, man. You get any of that? I got none of that. No. <laughs> okay. Well, I will. I will. I'll clip that and I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get that out on the. Uh, you know the the sleepers. Twitter channel. I'll send whatever. it to the Discord. I don't know if the language is okay enough for for Twitter. Ah, uh, understood. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad you were playing well, my friend. Uh, thanks for the entertainment value, of course. And sorry to hear that uh, you got a double technical that resulted in your team losing as a 30 year old man. It is what it is, man. Sometimes what? you have stand. Sometimes At you have what? stand. Sometimes you have stand on business. At what age are you going to stop getting technicals in men's league? I would, when stripes stop making it personal. <laughs> Are you still going to be playing men's league at forty? And uh, probably not. To be honest with you, that that sounds like a little bit too much. Okay, so you got what, like a five year shelf life left? I'm probably once I have a kid, whenever that is, I'm probably done playing men's league. Okay, all right. So wait, no, that's not true. That. That's not true. I'm giving it one more run because, like, I want like that Fred Van Fleet when he had his kid and made the run to. Like, I want to see what dad me is like on the hoop court. I'll give that like two to three years and then I'll probably retire. I need to see you with dad strength for sure. And I would like to think that you do not get double technicals that result in your team losing 
in the playoffs once you're a father. I think I like to think that it would change you a little bit. I, do you show me any respect for the fact that I made sure there was like no children or anything in the gym like before I went off? Did you really? Yeah, I did. I I noticed my surroundings because sometimes guys bring their kids to the game and like they're near the bench or bring like their wives or something like that. There really wasn't anybody in the gym, and that that did prompt me to make more of a scene. That makes me give you less respect because that means this entire move was premeditated. So you you chose to get thrown out of a men's league game that your team needed you in. Uh, we were. I mean, it was over at that point. I think. Okay, so then you're just making a scene for the drama. I'm making a scene because stripes can't get away with anything, and they feel like they have a whistle and stripes on their body. They feel like they can get away with anything. It seems like they did get away with it, though. You seem like the only loser in this situation. Exactly, and that's why I'll be back, standing on business. All right. Uh, Hey, one more announcement, then we'll do comments from the Discord. Uh, Because people in our community were so kind to us and supported us the last time that we were on a bleacher report stream. We have new bleacher report streams to announce. In fact, we have two of them coming later this week. We're going to be in the bleacher report app on Thursday, December 7th at 11 AM doing a room on our power five conference predictions. We're going to be back the next day, Friday, December 8th at noon debating who are the actual CBB blue bloods. That should be fascinating with a Michigan State fan on the panel. Uh, and then we'll be back a week before Christmas, December 19th, also at noon, doing some pro player draft comps for top college basketball players. We'll see. Maybe we could even get Andy Katz to join that Bleacher Report room. We know he's a BR guy, so I'd love to hear some of his NBA player comps. But, uh, yeah, we're back. Thank you to the people that supported. Show more love. Uh, we're hoping this can be an ongoing thing where every month we get booked for some of these rooms. And right now that's happening. And right now that means some money in our pockets. So thank you everyone in sleepers nation. Stay tuned for Thursday. Can't wait. Next up. All right. Uh, discord comments, starting with Ulamog's sleep freak of the week, which goes to Dan to F and man for being a conversation starter with a whole new topic of sneakers. Sleeper of the week goes to Greg for an exceptional week of producing and recording hours and hours of content. All of this done while Carter was MIA. And then he adds, seriously, if y'all aren't paid Discord members yet, consider joining up. We got to keep this sustainable for the guys. Round of applause. Congrats congrats to the freak and congrats congrats to the sleeper of the week. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Yes. Shout out Dan to F and man. I agree. He had uh, integral contributions to the discord this week. Join the discord. Thanks Ulamog for being so great about uh, pushing people to join the discord. Also honorary sleeper of the week is Ulamog for going like elsewhere out in public and like commenting things that are in the sleepers centric universe. Like he was on the boilers in the stands live stream, like pushing the Lance Jones narrative, the comments, which I love. So we see it. Don't think you're, your efforts are unnoticed, Ulamog. Craig says, with conference play starting up, I'm curious on your outlook for the rest of the season for Michigan. How do you think they finish in the conference? I think there's a lot of winnable games for Michigan in the Big Ten um, if they change some things. This current Michigan team is going to really, really struggle. I think a, lo- a lot of my talk with Michigan right now is I'm on the different side of you. I think that Terrace can flip somewhat of some type of switch to be resemblant of what he was last year. Uh, I know you don't feel the same, but if they get that, I think there's something with this team because they do have like Doug is going to get them to a certain point. Like he's that he's that special in my eyes. Um, And I think that might equate to wins if he can get something else from others on the team. So uh, I know you're a little bit lower because you think that Terrace might just be a lost cause this season, but um, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. You know who else was special was Judah Mintz last year on Syracuse and they were just a stinky team with a superstar. So that's, that's kind of where this Michigan, Michigan team, team has way more than that Syracuse team had, in my opinion. They could, but uh, like, do I trust Olivier right now? Not at all. Terrace Reed is horrendous. He's horrendous. He should be good. He's not. He's horrendous. So I guess you're right. Like if Terrace Reed suddenly becomes a good basketball player, but I don't think that's flipping a switch. I think that's like replace him with a totally different guy. Um, I don't I, like 
are are you approaching like cheddar over terrace minutes no because cheddar is the worst rebounder in the country if cheddar okay. could, if cheddar could rebound yes like every, everything else on a basketball court cheddar is better at than terrace reed yeah Aaliyah, Aaliyah not being uh not coming to michigan hurt yeah maybe stop recruiting guys that aren't going to play for michigan that'd be nice like to just <laughs> Good start one, one of these days maybe we can do that um yeah, I keep the a Terrace Reed comp I came up with that I don't think you've heard yet is uh he's Jordan Morgan if Jordan Morgan was the opposite at everything. That's an awful basketball player. And that's Terrace Reed. Uh, like that's Jordan Morgan had like nothing except for like he could finish dunks and he was always in the right spot and he was smart as hell. And Terrace Reed is like he has everything, but he's never in the right spot and he can't finish anything. <laughs> like that's I just don't know what you do with that. If that's your uh, you need 30 minutes from that guy at center. We'll know more about Michigan after tonight. Watch the Indiana preview and uh, stay tuned for the recap after the show. Travis Nelson says games like Michigan, Alabama are where sports are the best when the dynasty or great programs are the underdogs against the new team on the block. Do you like that dynamic? Uh, mm. Not really, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm not giving this like enough credit because I don't like the whole, oh, this team is the best team until somebody knocks them off. But I'm also a huge fan of this team is the top dog until someone else proves they're not the top dog. So I feel like I, I got to find some type of medium with that. But because I, I, that's how I look at it conference wise, like Purdue's the top dog in the Big Ten until someone knocks Purdue off. But I don't feel that same way with that same narrative nationally. And I don't know if that aligns or makes any sense. Yeah, I think I would have liked it more if, like, I don't know, if it was, like, Michigan, Georgia, honestly. Just from, like, a viewing standpoint. Like, if you want Michigan to win, you are happy it's Bama, not Georgia. But I don't know. I just I, – I don't love pretending that Alabama is, like, some dynasty right now. I don't think this football team is that good. And they very well might beat Michigan. I already have placed an Alabama money line bet to beat Michigan. But like that a large part of that is because I think Michigan's entire program is acting like Alabama is some unbeatable freight train when like they're not. <laughs> this Alabama team has not been very good at many different times this season. So Okay. Can I push back really quick on the Alabama thing? Yeah. Like you like you saying they're not very good. Like you're saying they had the close half. They had obviously the fourth down thing against Auburn. But like twelve and one, undefeated in the SEC, won the SEC championship, gave Georgia the most dominant team in college football, its first loss in thirty games, has the most ranked wins this season of any team in college football. Like that's a that's a really good football team. No, it's a it's a great football team. Michigan is favored in this game as they should be. Okay, yeah, okay, and, I'm, and I'm I'm with that. Nobody's act like that. Michigan themselves isn't even acting like they should be favored in this game, which is ridiculous. Which is, which is hilarious too, by the way. Like there's, it's like the, the 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 first number one team in the country who's the, the who's the, who wants to be the spunky underdog. Yeah, it, no, it's ridiculous to me, and it's I I don't know, I I just don't like the vibes of it. But you're right, Alabama's a very good football team. Don't I'm not taking anything away. Just they're not Georgia. Like they, this, <laughs> you got. You got a gift that you don't have to play Georgia, that they're out of the playoff, and now you're playing Alabama. And don't treat Alabama like they're Georgia because they're not Georgia. Alabama played a bunch of close games this year. They just won a bunch of close games. Michigan's a better football team than all of the teams that Alabama played close games with this season, except for Georgia. So Michigan's going to need to play great to win the game, but come on, you're the favorite. Act like you're the favorite. You don't need to be cocky about it, but just like <laughs> I can't believe that's been the narrative. Uh, Zach Wilson's Blicky, great, great username, has a fun one. He wants to hear us build the most fun conference. Just create a conference that you think would be the most exciting or dominant or just produce classics every night uh, or just any kind of conference, all offense, all defense, et cetera. Hmm. I'm going to once again dip into my soccer uh, acumen here really quickly. Uh, you're familiar with the Champions League, of course. You're a, you're you're a a, fo a football fan. I'm a Champions would, League champion. Yeah, I would love somewhat of a Champions League thing to create a super to create a conference, another conference on a year to year basis. Like keep everything the same with a national tournament. Don't actually have a Champions League tournament, but I would love for like the top two teams in every conference to be the Champions Conference the next season. 
I think that'd be fun. So specific to basketball only though, right? Because that's kind of the hurdle in all of the fun conference building. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I'm 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 talking strictly basketball. Yeah. I, I kind of do wish there was a system where like teams could be in different conferences for different sports. Um which like Notre Dame is essentially the model for that, right? Independent for football, ACC yeah. for basketball. And I, I you know, I don't want to like uh hate on any of like our Mac uh fan listeners out there. But like if we had relegation systems, like if you're in power five conference and you finish bottom two, like you got to go to the NEC. Yeah, I just again, like like is Michigan State football in the Mac now after yeah, like after we're, we're yeah, like we are firing up for the Southern Illinois Redbirds or whatever they are. But then basketball still here. Yeah. See, I that that gets so messy to me. I don't know how to. You want to do it the same, like the basketball teams invested in the last football game against Indiana because we we got we don't want to play in the MAC. I would kind of love that. I really would. I don't know. Um, I, I'm just gonna approach this question just from like a build the basketball conference perspective, and uh, I'm gonna run through teams I would like to see in my dream conference. I would like Purdue in that conference. I would like UConn in that conference. I would like Arizona in that conference. I would like Baylor in that conference. I would like Gonzaga in that conference. Kansas, North Carolina, Duke. Basically just the Blue Bloods and good teams. Yeah. That's about it. I'm in on that, though. Yeah. Just, I don't know. But I don't think there's many Big Ten teams that make that other than, I guess, put Michigan State in there. I guess, but if you're in that conference, you're losing a bunch of games right now. Maybe, maybe we rise to the challenge. Oh, maybe, maybe. Good question, Zach Wilson's blicky. Uh, Jay so- Meisner says, I noticed Houston moved up the rankings, even getting a few first place votes, and Ken Palm has them at number one. I don't doubt they're good, but they also haven't really played anyone major yet. Do you guys think Houston is a contender? Personal here, opinion. With what I've seen with my eyes, I've watched a couple Houston basketball games. This Houston team doesn't do it for me. I think they're good, but I think they're a watered down version of a really, really good Houston team that's been the past couple of years. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm out on this Houston team as far as like national title contender. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, as far as national title contender, like I think they're a good basketball team. Don't get me wrong, but they are a watered down version of like really good Houston teams. Mostly, I just think Jamal Shedd didn't get better. And I think they're they're a lot worse in the backcourt than they were last year, and they don't have Jarius Walker anymore. Right. That's yeah. that's tough. You lost some really good players. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And then final comment from Fino's Burner. He says, respect to me. Indiana argument in the preview. Uh, hopefully, we get an entertaining game tomorrow. Handshake emoji. Hopefully, Fino's Burner, I'm on here cheersing to you after Doug McDaniel gives your backcourt 40 points tonight in a Doug McDaniel t-shirt with a Chug McDaniel loaded. That's what I'm hoping for, but I'm also knowing that's probably not going to happen because my team stinks. Your Chug McDaniel has to be an emergency mix with vodka. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll feel better. Maybe just a Doug, maybe like a 40-point win is all I need from Doug to feel better. Could happen. Please, Doug. Fino's burner also says to you, the Malik Renew disrespect is kind of wild. People told me his name is Renew, by the way. I always say Renew. Yeah, I'm going to continue to say Renew. Um, no, I'm not. That's the, I, I don't want to disrespect people's names like that. Is it? Is it? Is it Renew? That's what the comment section said. I'm just going to run with it. Okay. All right. I'll go with that, too. I, I actually, funny, I haven't watched an Indiana game with sound this year. I don't know how people want to <laughs> take, I don't know how people want to take that, but um. I, I I didn't know I disrespected him. I like him a lot. I'm I think I'm probably higher on anybody in the country than uh, on Malik uh, Renu, but uh, I just I don't like the fit. Mm. Okay. All right. Noted. We'll see. Tonight could be a big swing night for our thoughts on both Indiana and Michigan. Thank you to the comments from the Discord. Appreciate everybody. Join the Discord. Link in the description. Nine ninety nine a month. Actually, pay for it, please. We're sixteen people away from. Uh, a power hour episode and we have lots more giveaways in store once we get to 100 people all right cart four topics today let's get right into it the net rankings are here do we care no (laughs) is that because we don't care about rankings at all or is it specific to the net 
Uh, you know what? Actually, I do care about it. Uh, only in this regard is that it gives it gives us a chance to be critical of others' hard work and thoughts and give opinions on something that we would not do. You just like being critical of things that you don't have to put the work in for. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, I mean, if I have a chance to be critical of somebody else's hard work, I'll be the first there in line to be critical of it. And then when they ask me to offer a solution, I'll offer nothing. Yeah, we're good at that for sure. We're, we're pretty good at that. That's in our wheelhouse. We're pretty good at that. Um, okay, so AP poll came out last week for the first time, and uh, or maybe not the first time. But the, there was the new one that everyone was all up in arms with with Purdue at number one, and then it seemed like all week everybody wanted to just talk about the AP poll, and then the AP poll dropped again this week, and it feels like nobody cared to me. But then the net rankings came out, and everybody cared. I, why did people stop caring about the AP poll this week? I think people are going to realize that it takes a lot of energy to care about the AP poll every single week. So is this the only time this season we're going to care about the net too? Uh, Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think so. Until the tournament gets here, then it's like resume time. All, all this, it. all this truly is, is it's an argument. If your team is good in it and it's, it's, it's something you brush past. If you're not hype about it. Michigan State is number 51 in the net. I'm not going to I'm not going to reference anything about net rankings. I'm not because they're number 51. If they were number 7, you would see my Twitter bio with the laughing emoji and the point emoji all over talking about don't speak to me if your team is in top 10 in net. I was unaware that Michigan State was 51st in the net. Uh that's one spot below Villanova, one spot ahead of UIC, which is Illinois Chicago. I love the net. I could not be more. Where, where's the Michigan net. in the net? I I don't know. I don't know. My eyes have been bad lately, so I don't know. Okay, um, mine are fine. I'll let you know in a second. Okay, thanks. I uh, <laughs> some interesting just team <laughs> spots here. Michigan State 51, Kentucky's 45. Uh, James Madison is 35 and uh, like can- Kansas is 15th. How is Kansas 15th? I, I, I really don't get the net rankings to be honest with you. It's just quad <laughs> wins. Right. But like, yeah, but at the, I, yeah, I get that. But so like, I mean, South Carolina is like top 20 in the net. I think Kansas is getting dinged because they've played a bunch of quad four games, but like, Kansas has played some of the best teams in the country. That's why I'm confused why they're all the way at 15. You know? Yeah, I'm wondering like how it's actually weighted. Like, aren't shouldn't the quad one wins carry more weight than a quad four win? Like, is is I don't, I need to know what the actual algorithm for this is. I kind of like not knowing the algorithm. <laughs> I kind of like the mystique around it. Uh, Houston. Uh, go, Greg, oh, go wait, ahead. You wait, have Greg, you have Michigan's number. What are we? One one thirtieth. Eighty nine. Oh, okay. That's not bad. Uh, down there, surrounded by Evansville, Bradley, Harvard, and Duquesne. I mean, and Texas Tech, one spot ahead of us. You could have led with that, but. Oh, sorry. I missed that. Yeah. Uh, ahead of teams like Kansas State, UCLA, Oakland, who just always covers every single game. Yeah, I feel I feel all right. Wow. I mean, ahead, of, ahead of, okay. Ahead of Arkansas. I feel all right. Uh, by the way, why is UCLA so low in this? <laughs> Dude, this is great. Uh, all, uh, Indiana's 137 in the net. Um, and also for people wondering out there, the lowest rated power five team in the net is our Louisville Cardinals. Mm, that hurts. That hurts. I feel like Louisville deserves better than that from their results this year. Been a good basketball team this year at times. Yeah, they do. Wow, the net. <laughs> okay, I might be coming around. That's kind of fun. You like the chaos of the net? Yeah, like like Maryland is 210. That fits. Counterpoint on why it's not fun. Wisconsin and Virginia are one spot away from each other, both one spot behind San Diego State, 24, 25, 26. I hate that grouping. I might be in on net teams outside of the top 100. Okay, so we just have to ignore the top 100. Yeah, like we go to the AP poll, we go to the coaches poll, we go to any other poll we want to. Go to net, start at 100, and then start going. Okay. I don't hate that. Um, I don't think there's much else to discuss with net, is there? Like, Houston's number one. Do we buy that Houston is the best team in the country? No. Do they have the best resume? Because isn't that – like, net's more about resume and not about, like, team quality, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, you, I think it, I I think yeah, it's, it's about it's about it's about straight up like wins and losses against good teams, good teams. But Houston is now number 1 in Ken Palm and the net rankings. Are they number 1 in Ken Palm too? They are. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly I did not realize that Houston already had three quad one wins. I mean, that is pretty impressive. Who's the best team they beat though? Like is they played uh impressive? wasn't the best team they played Xavier? Wasn't that, that their best win at home? And they put wait at Xavier, I think was their best win. Xavier at Xavier, yeah, it's a tough game. And they survived. Uh Utah on a neutral, and then I guess Dayton on a neutral is a quad one. They oh Dayton on a neutral is a quad one. That feels like it should be quad two. Yeah. I want our own quad system. <laughs> Can we? I've been joking about this for like a year now, but I really want like a sleepalytics page somewhere where like it, instead of, I don't know, like adjusted offensive efficiency and poor pag and random shit like that. Like we just have like dog in them as a column and yeah. nobody like, can understand what the, the formula is. Like instead of PER rankings or like BPR, shout out Evan Mia, it's just him. Yeah. I, I want that. And I think we could easily do that. And I think I could give someone an actual formula to calculate that if they want. We just wouldn't tell anybody what it is. So if any web developers out there are interested in helping us with sleep let us know. Because uh, I want our own. I want to enter the rankings game. This rankings shit seems way too fun right now. Nobody's being held accountable. It, you, you can't be held accountable for rankings. It's all opinionated. Yeah, I want that. I want that really bad in our life. All right, uh, I want to use the net rankings for topic number two now. I want to play a game of fraud or for real. I have six teams in the top 25 from the net rankings that I'm just going to give you their name and their rank, and you tell me if this team is a fraud or if this team is for real. doesn't have to be relevant to the spot here. Like I'm, I'm about to tell you the number two team in the net rankings, and I don't want you to evaluate them as if they're the number two team in the country. Just want you to tell me like fraud or for real as in, do you trust this team? Are they a good team? Are you buying this team? Or are they a fraud? Mm-hmm. Starting with BYU, who is the number two team in the country. BYU is for real. I'm in on the Cougars. I'm in on them. I'm in on the Cougars. I think they're old. I think they got some guys that can go. Uh, I love Hall. Um, I I like this BYU team. I think they got something there. Uh, Mark Pope is a really good head coach. I'm, I'm a fan of his. I think he always... I'm not saying he's like winning the WCC, but I think he's a, a guy that challenges teams like Gonzaga and things like that in St. Mary's. So I think this might be the year that like BYU gets over that hump and like actually gets it. Oh, they're in the big 12 this year. I forgot yeah, about what a that. year. What a year for them to make the jump. That's, right? that's crazy. So they're making the jump and it's, it's, it's kind of crazy because people were always like, Oh shit. Like BYU to the big 12, that's going to be like, that's going to be hell for them. I think that BYU is going to find themselves in a really good spot because they're going to have a chance to win games against big 12 teams. And those are going to be a lot of quad one wins and they're, they're a good basketball team. So yeah, I think, I think BYU is for real. Yeah. They picked the right year to make the jump. Cause if you go to Ken Palm right now and you read from top to bottom, it goes Houston, Baylor, BYU, Kansas, like BYU is ahead of Kansas according to Ken Palm right now. Crazy. Kind of insane, but I do think they're going to hold up. I like teams that blow everybody out. That's just a thing. I like teams that always win in blowout fashion. And right now, BYU just wins comfortably in like every game they play. Nobody can keep up. That seems really good to me. Dallin Hall is one of my favorite players in the country right now. They got dudes. They got bucket getters, and we like bucket getters. Uh, I, I I never want to like BYU, though. I want that known. Like aesthetically and just like who they are every year, that's like very low on my scale of teams I wish are good. But you got to give credit where credit is due. Like, BYU looks pretty good this year. It's fun. All right, next on Fraud or For Real, Colorado State at seventh in the net rankings. This is going to hurt me, but I'm going to say fraud. I'm going to say fraud. I'm gonna say fraud. I, I love Isaiah Stevens. Isaiah Stevens is the top three point guard in the country, top five, whatever you want to call it. He's up there in the argument for best point guard in the country in my eyes. Um. I don't think that this Colorado State team can check anybody. I don't think they can check anybody. Uh, I think their their best win over Creighton was an outlier in my eyes. I think that was a historically bad offensive game from Creighton. That's not going to happen again. Um, 
And outside of that, isn't that Creighton win carrying a, a whole lot of weight for how good this Colorado State team is? Like, I think they're good. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm thinking, like, for real, like, top 10 team in the country, top 15 team in the country, I don't see that as much. They strike me as, like, a 20 to 25 range team. Okay. I think they're very for real. I think this team can make a Final Four this year. Uh, I don't like the Creighton game because I, you're right. Trey Alexander was bad, but Colorado State also didn't shoot well in that game. They beat Creighton by 21 points. They shot 26% from three as a team. Like, that's that's something. Like, it wasn't just like Colorado State was hot and Creighton wasn't. They were just 21 points bad on a bad shooting night. Like, <laughs> I, I'm i in. I think Isaiah Stevens is arguably the best point guard in the country. When you have the best point guard in the country – you're going to win games and you matter. And I don't care what else is around you. Um, and honestly, I was impressed. Like, it's not just Creighton. Like, okay, yeah, they beat Creighton. They beat Colorado. They beat Washington back-to-back. They now have five wins against the Ken Palm Top 100 through eight games. Uh, Colorado's good, and I thought Colorado State was the better team. Washington, I get, is Washington, and we want to make jokes. I think this Washington team is better than we want to admit. Like, the fact that Washington and San Diego State was in a really close game, like, I, I buy that. San Diego State's a good basketball team with a National Player of the Year candidate right now. So I, to me, this was a game like Colorado State was trailing early and easily could have lost. And instead, they ripped the game back away because that's what good teams do. So I mean, on the Rams, I think they're really good. I'm not going to sell this team really ever um, this season, I don't think. Next on Fraud or For Real, Princeton at number nine. Uh, frauds. Is there anything like that catches your attention with Princeton at all? No. Not at all. They're 8-0. No. Not not to me, not personally, no. I think they're good. Don't get me wrong. But, like, I guess we didn't really put the for real, like, ranking scale. Like, when you say for real, like, are we talking, like, Elite Eight type team? Like, what are we talking for real? You can define it however you want. Just, like, is it okay. a team that's worth your time and attention or not? I think that Princeton's a team that could win a game in the in – the, in the NCAA tournament, obviously, uh, shit, they won a game last year as a 15 seed. Oh, shit, they won two games last year as a 15 seed. Um, I do think that wasn't a fluke as far as how their team plays. They play a really good style of basketball. But I, I'm just, like, not overly impressed, I guess, with this Princeton team. Like, they're not popping off the page to me like a team that should be taken seriously as, like, a Elite Eight level type team or something like that. Um. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna say fraud. I'll keep it at that. I don't. I like. I don't think they're gonna be more notable than they are right now. So let's move on. Uh, Iowa State fraud or for real? They're twelfth in the net rankings. Uh fraud. <laughs> Am I saying everyone's a fraud? I don't feel that way. I, this might have my feelings of net ranking, but um, I just don't think that this Iowa State team has any guys to me. Like I think they have some really good. They have some. They have a lot of pieces. In my eyes, like Lindsay's a good piece. Don't want to butcher his last name on this with the freshman. I think it's uh, Mahalovich, maybe. Don't want to butcher that, but uh, actually, a, a Michigan State recruit. We were in his final six, I believe. Felt good about it. Shout out Michigan. But I think they have a lot of pieces, but they don't really have a guy to get behind and like be be that be that guy that closes games or things like that. They play extremely hard. They play good defense. They're obviously Iowa State. Coach uh, Otzelberger, you know, has has a certain way of playing. I think he does that style very well. But I'm just, like, not buying this this Iowa State team. Um, the the five-star freshman, Omaha Baloo, has not been effective at all. And I think that lowers their ceiling a lot, too. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not in on this Iowa State team. I would say fraud. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think – the I was very ready to say that for real after the first half against Texas A&M where they were just smoking them. And I think Lipsy's really good, but I don't like anything else they have. And the fact that they blew that game makes me very skeptical. I also feel like in general, um, this is now like an Otzelberger thing. Like if you go back the last two years, they were undefeated through December 21st in 2022. They were 13 and two through January 10th last season. And then the wheels fell off this year. They're six and two. I think they're going to lose a bunch of games in big 12 play. And they're just a good non-conference team under odds based on the way he schedules. 
that they right. played they play the softest non conference schedule of all time. Yeah, it's crazy. Which is honestly like I don't know. They say like you're oh, you're supposed to schedule schedule well for net ranks, right? Like that's how how is Iowa State good in the net with the schedule they played? They haven't beaten anybody. They haven't beaten a top hundred team yet this season. Yeah, it's weird. I don't get it. Uh, all right, two more quick ones. Cincinnati at 13, fraud or for real? Ooh, I'm going to just quickly – I'm going to just say for real. I still like – I like Wes Miller. I like the pieces on this team. Aziz, uh, Simone, and like I, – I like the Cincinnati team. I think they got guys. So you have Cincinnati for real and Colorado State fraud. Yeah, but also that that goes back to what I said in the preseason. And I kind of staked my claim with Cincinnati. I it's something about them I can't shake that team. Like every time I watch them, it's I, it's something about them. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go fraud. Uh, just I, I like the pieces. I like C.J. Frederick. I like Seamus Uh I like Day Day Thomas. I like Jizzle James. Don't think they're actually a good basketball team. I think it's the opposite of BYU where they're going to get to Big 12 play and, like, big adjustment, period. Co- Colorado State's for real, by the way, too. I need oh, to, so we're changing I, that. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, that that's unacceptable. That's on me. Final one. The Really, the reason I wanted to do this segment with you was just building up to this. The Aztecs, San Diego State, they are 24th in the net. You've long been a San Diego State hater. Fraud or for real? I'm going to say for real because oh! they have to. Yeah. Because because I have to, because they have a national player of the year candidate. He's so good. He's he's insane. He is insane. The breakout everyone was talking about for seven years now or a decade, it feels like, is finally upon us. Is he a top five player in the country to you? Yeah. And by he, we're obviously talking about Jadon Ladee. Yes. Is he a top three player in the country to you? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, he is. Is he a top two player in the country to you? He's probably number two behind Zach Eady. Wow, you're taking Ladee over Terrence Shannon. I feel like I have to because of the stats. I personally would take Shannon, but like Ladee's been unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. I just I I was shocked. You're really giving in on this more than I thought you would. It's impressive stuff. He's good. I mean, They're for real. I yeah. I don't have any other thoughts. San Diego State's really good. Uh, I mentioned it when I was talking through Washington and why I like Colorado State's win there. Like I think San Diego State's really good. Uh, I think they're going to be a serious Final Four threat again this season. And this pains me to say, but uh, one of the reasons we liked Creighton so much in the off season as a title pick was like revenge, get back there. San Diego State could easily do that this year, right? Like they were right there. They were right there. They could get back. We'll see. All right. Thanks, Net Rankings. That was a nice little fraud for real segment. Um, This should be an interesting topic, but we're going to go back to this because we've done Purdue previews and recaps in the last two days where we did not mention this. And I think think this is compelling enough to have a real conversation about so after painters um i I don't know if this was the loss or if this was just after their win against iowa i I think it was after the win against iowa okay so there was basically a press conference where painter took to the podium and was asked what have you seen from um like after the loss to Northwestern, what have you seen? And I actually want to try and pull up the audio on this so that we can run it uh, because it was really interesting. I don't have it ready, so I need to find it. I was going to, do you have, I was going to scroll up to it. I have it now. Here we go. All right. This is Matt Painter talking. uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to play it. This is Matt Painter. It's really stupid for us. Like, (laughs) This is it's plagued us, but it's plagued. So when people say like, "Oh, they just lose the kind of the same way," it's it's really stupid, and you don't understand basketball if you say that. Like it's really stupid um, because it's just such an un, coming from such an untrained eye, you know. Because the other team is trying to turn you over, 
by everybody has an issue with turnovers. Every team has an issue with turnovers in some game this year. So when you play eight games and like you have a couple games, like whatever, like your 80%, your 75%, whatever it might be, is you've taken care of the basketball. But you're going to have a game in there where you don't. You just don't want it to be when it matters the most. And so for us, like, it's the execution of the – for us, like – All right, so that's the quote. Um, little choppy there on how I rolled that out. Bear with me. What do we make of this quote? This is how I'll tee this up. Painter all offseason starting the moment the season ended last year to Fairleigh Dickinson. Hit the podium. All the lights are on him. It was one of the more impressive podium press conference performance I've ever seen in the moment because he he's talked openly. He talked pointedly. He talked honestly. He was vulnerable. And he basically put a lot of the blame on himself. He was like, I need to reevaluate everything. I need to reevaluate the way I build these teams. I need to reevaluate if I am part of this problem. And then he kept that narrative going all offseason. Like anytime you could find a microphone in front of this guy – it was like, well, yeah, I know. I know I've made mistakes. I know we need changes. We're making the changes. It's going to be different for Purdue this season. And then you get one loss. You're one loss in to this season. After a great start to the year, by the way. Don't, don't act like I'm not giving Painter credit here. But you're one loss in, and instantly you're getting real defensive here. Getting real. You just don't know basketball. You're just stupid. If you're trying to say because we lost to Northwestern. A loss, by the way, which had many of the same elements to the losses they had last year in the biggest moments, namely Braden Smith not knowing what planet he's on. <laughs> like that, that was the largest one. Stupid mistakes from your backcourt was what lost you games in March and now lost you a game against Boo Booey. Um, I I don't like this look from Painter, and I'm just kind of confused by it. What do you make of this? Yeah, I'm I'm very confused by it because in my eyes, I honestly would have even respected it more if Painter was like, I mean, yeah, some sometimes old habits like that can still, you know, uh, what do you what do you call kind of rear rear their ugly head, I guess it was, but like it doesn't make it doesn't make it known that that'll happen for the rest of the season. But the fact that he was very defensive in this and also also lying, because <laughs> like you mentioned. The loss, I think, to Northwestern did have some similarities to what plagued them down the stretch last year and in that loss to Fairleigh Dickinson. So um, I I don't think it's a good sign for Purdue, to be honest with you, because as much as you want to acknowledge and take like what happened last year head on, you also got to somewhat at some point put it behind you. And to me, this had the feelings of a press conference of something that like it keeps them up at night that this happened last season. And obviously it should because it was an embarrassing loss. But at the same time, letting last year's downfall at the certain points of Fairleigh Dickinson seep into this season and have it be like that monkey that's on your back, I think can kind of affect play and affect the team mentally and it's after one loss at Northwestern and this is happening too and coach Painter is pulling out the you you don't know ball like come on man that's crazy one loss and we're already going to the you don't know ball I love Matt Painter that's the thing like I I do, I, too. I do too I didn't expect this out of paint as a guy he is arguably my favorite coach in the country. him and Brad Underwood I know they're very different people but like those are just two guys I like as people and I'm going to root for those guys I think Painter's great for the sport. I think he's always been honest. He's a good interview. Uh, I think he does things the right way. I want to see this guy win. I just disagree so much with what he's trying to do here. And I agreed with so much of what he was saying in the offseason where he was taking a lot of the blame and saying we need to make changes. And I, I thought that was a refreshing, honest approach that I could really get behind. So for him to lose one game and now suddenly say the people criticizing this are stupid, I, I don't get where he's coming from. I have some numbers, by the way. Um, look, was was the Northwestern loss identical to the Fairleigh Dickinson loss? Absolutely not. No, it was not. Uh, Nor Northwestern had a superstar, namely. That was the biggest thing. Boo Booey was incredible in this game. Fairleigh Dickinson didn't have anyone like that. You should win the Fairleigh Dickinson game way more than you should win a game against Northwestern where Boo Booey goes for 31 points. But 
there are similarities here that come down to the way Matt Painter designs his basketball team. And if, if certain guys don't change, they are going to be vulnerable to losing games like this, where the numbers look like this in the fairly Dickinson loss cart. They had 16 turnovers in the Northwestern loss. They had 17 turnovers. Braden Smith was responsible for seven of the 16 turnovers against Fairleigh Dickinson. Braden Smith was responsible for six of the 17 turnovers against Northwestern as a team from three in the Fairleigh Dickinson game. Purdue made five three pointers on 26 attempts against Northwestern. Purdue made five three pointers on 19 attempts. And the biggest thing, everybody left the Fairleigh Dickinson game being like, guys won't shoot from three. Every, everybody curled up into a ball and was afraid to shoot. They shot less three pointers in the game against Northwestern than they did in the Fairleigh Dickinson game, made the same amount. So I don't know how you can have those things be true. You lost a game where your backcourt imploded, where the moment got too big, where in various ways, last year it was guys afraid to shoot, guys a little hesitant, Braden trying to do too much. Against Northwestern, Braden Smith and Lance Jones both tried to do too much. And both were disasters down the stretch. Lance Jones fouls out needlessly. Braden Smith flipping the ball into the third row or straight to a Northwestern breakaway. Like (laughs) that is a consistent theme and it's not stupid for people to point that out. And I, I've just never viewed Matt Painter as a guy who gets defensive. And that's what I saw here in this press conference was for the first time in his career, he is being super defensive and I don't love that from him. I think the vibes are weird. And you, you know what you know what that means when you get defensive? It means you're on edge. And I don't think and I don't think it it mean I don't think it I don't think that it does any good for Purdue as a team to be that on edge. Because a team that plays on edge is a team that oh shit, in the last four minutes of a game, flashbacks. I don't want to make the same mistakes as last year, overthinking things. That is a very real option that could happen when teams are on edge. And like I said, you don't want to forget what happened. You do want to use it as a motivator. Everyone in Purdue circles talks about how this team recognizes and acknowledges what happened last year and uses it as a motivating factor to be great this season. But there is a negative side to that if you can't let it go at a certain point. And it causes teams to be on edge or players to play on edge or coaches to be on edge that can seep into a program. So it's, it's very interesting to me. And so I'm going to keep my eye on uh, and say what you want. I know people are like, Oh shit, you're just going to keep your eye on this because of one post game press conference. I mean, yeah, I am because I, I think that this has the signs of a team that is defensive and on edge. What? That's the other thing is like, he's trying to make the point on turnovers. That's like turnovers happen. Like teams turn the ball over in some games, like that every team is going to try and force us into turnovers. The problem with those statements are that in my opinion, Braden Smith's turnovers in this game were pretty unforced. Like (laughs) it wasn't something that Northwestern was doing to cause Braden Smith into those issues. This was Braden Smith picking the wrong time to try to throw a behind the head, no look pass. And That is the same thing. He got wound up. He was just, he lost his brain. And Braden Smith is one of the smartest players in the country. But at the end of last season, in the biggest moments, he was not. He was, you couldn't trust him. And that came back for the only time we've seen it this season. It came back against Northwestern. And if Painter wants to sit at a podium and tell us that's not something to worry about, there's no similarities there. I just strongly disagree with that. And maybe he's doing it to protect Braden. Maybe he's doing it to protect his team, but uh, it just, it was very out of, I don't want to say character. That's something we've never seen Painter do before. We haven't seen Matt Painter get defensive like this. And uh, for a team that just won the Maui Invitational, for a team that has this program humming, I don't think it would have been that bad to just be like, yeah, we saw some of those things we're scared of and we need to fix that instead of make excuses for it and criticize people's ball knowledge because Braden Smith was, a dis- I don't get it. I just don't get it. All right. Um, I'm I'm curious to see what Purdue fans are going to think of that segment. We'll see. Last topic today. Uh, 
you wanted to do a final four rehash, like ha- have things changed who are our final four teams. I put a quick spin on this. I just want to know who's your updated pick for national champion before the season. You and I both had Creighton. My pick is going to change. I'll spoil that right now. And uh, I think the interesting thing is here. There's a lot of teams. I would feel good saying, Oh, this is a final four team. There isn't one team in the country right now that I feel good saying that's a national championship team. I'm curious if you feel the same. Uh, so I am changing my pick from Creighton. Um, and there is a team that I feel good about being a national champion, and it is the Arizona Wildcats. I feel good about that team being a national championship. I think they have all the makings of it. You go one through five on the roster. I think they got it. I think Tommy Lloyd's an a amazing coach. I just I think they got a recipe for to be a national champion this year. And I'm and I feel like confident in saying that. Okay. I don't dislike that pick at all. I think Arizona is the best team in the country right now. Uh, Here's why I did not go with Arizona for my pick. They really almost let Michigan state back in the game. Good good, good Uh, defensive team by Michigan state. Yeah. But like, so we're, we're saying the team that should be the national champion favorite runaway. That's, that's the team is going to just like bend because AJ Hogard shows up. I mean, that's, they still, still won the game and covered. Okay. I just, that's a little like hairy for me. It's like Arizona looks so great. No, AJ Hogard kind of ripped the game away from them. I don't think whoever's going to win the national championship, I don't think is letting AJ Hogard rip the game. <laughs> that's, that's the barometer. No national champion of years is letting, letting that happen. I just, I just don't see it. And I look, I, I fell for Arizona last year. That was my title pick. Uh, I still believe in Tommy Lloyd in a big way. I still think there's some stuff here I'm skeptical of at the end of the season that isn't there in the non-conference. So, um, I, I yeah, I'm going to stay away. I think Arizona's number one right now. They're not my pick to win the title. I'm going with the only team that I can truly close my eyes and say, I I hold like I, I I see it. I can just see this team raising the trophy at the end of the year, and it's UConn. Hey, I like that pick. It's UConn. It's Tristan Newton being as good as he is, which is the biggest reason. Like, you got to have the better guard in March most games. Tristan Newton is almost always going to be the best guard. But, oh, by the way, they're also usually going to have the best center in most games. And I like the surrounding pieces. They got to get Castle back. But Hairband's been awesome. Cam Spencer's not going to be hurt forever and shoot two for 13. Um, I I like this team a lot. And if there's one team I just see, like I said, it's, it's UConn. They did it last year. They have the big game stuff. They can do it again. Can I get quickly a sleeper national champion pick out of you? If you had to go a little bit outside the box. Florida Atlantic. Ooh, I like that one. I think I'd go Baylor. I don't hate that either. I really like this Baylor team. If they just like go all in on the, I got all, like if I just go straight classic Scott Drew, I got three dogs at guard. Like I'm just going to go like, just give me Ray J Dennis and give me Jacoby Walter and let's just let's rock. Yeah. I like that. They they might end up the number one team in the country here soon if they just keep performing offensively the way they are. Uh who's the worst team that can win a national championship this year? We did this last year. It's one of my favorite segments to do every year, but who who's the worst team that could win it all this season? Illinois. Il- Illinois is kind of good though. They are, but I think that'd be the worst team that could win a national championship. Or Michigan right. State, some Big Ten team. <laughs> yeah, or or Michigan. No, no response there. Come on. <laughs> I mean, Doug. A special Doug McDaniel run. A Doug Kemba like Doug run. Doug can't Kemba for three weeks. Namari Burnett can't be Neil's Gip High. Okay. Uh, my actual answer is Northwestern for that. By the way. Oh my god. <laughs> they they were my answer last year too, but that's my actual answer. Boo's good enough to do it. Budarius is nice. He's good enough to do it. All right, let's wrap the show with one big thing presented by Big B. What's your one big thing today? Uh, my one big thing is I'm going to show my age with this. Um, I think that business cards should still be a thing. Um, I had a, like, event kind of thing yesterday, just like a meetup at, like, a coffee spot. Um, and I was having a conversation with, like, a potential client or whatever, and I went to give him my business card and I was like, yeah, you can contact me. And like, can I get your information as well? He pulls out his phone and he says, I'm going to airdrop it to you. 
And I'm like, airdrop it to me. Like, this is strange. So he airdrops like a virtual business card. Uh, I hated that. Absolutely hated that. I want business. I think business cards should be a thing. I want sleepers media business cards. Yeah, we do need those. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I like a good business card. I've also never used a business card the way a business card is intended to be used. What What do you use it for? Like if somebody gives me a business card, I'm throwing it away. Okay. What, what Like go back in your tech marketing days. What were you doing with your business cards? Throwing them away. You you weren't handing them out at all. Like I feel like you were oh, with just, my I, business cards. Yeah, I would hand. I'm saying when someone gives me a business card, I'm throwing it away. Oh really? Yeah, but that's uh, just me. Like okay. I I also never truly cared about my business though. <laughs> so you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> yeah. I and now that I'm in this business, if like if Rothstein gave me a business card, probably not throwing it away. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Of course, Rothstein is the one giving you a business. I card. just I'm trying to think of who would give me a business card in this industry. Okay, uh, my my one big thing is I wrote our family Christmas card letter yesterday. And hey, I, let's go! I can't wait. I, I feel pretty good about it. I'm excited about it. For those that have not received Christmas card letters from me, one, I'm sorry. Two, uh, yeah, it's become a thing. I'm on like year six where I like have to write a letter with the Christmas card, and everybody gets like their own little paragraph. But uh, different formatting this year a little bit because we have the daughter now. So Murphy led uh, led off the letter with the first paragraph. So uh, a lot of pressure on it. A lot of pressure. A little comedic style to this as always, but I feel pretty good about it. I'd give it like a nine out of 10 off first read. Let's go. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm excited. I feel good. All right. That's the show today. We'll be back on Wednesday. Thanks everybody for listening. Have a great day.